Welcome back to the 56th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one we're going to carry on talking about the many-to-many -many relationships and we're going to actually incorporate that into our site to hopefully give us some of the functionality to be able to then more easily generate our friends list. So let's get started by thinking about how we're going to implement the friends list using the many-to-many -many relationship. So you've got the model here with the many-to-many -many field defined here and that's going to link many users to each other and I think what we're going to do, just to keep it simple for now, instead of you know generating another template for the friends list and everything like that, we're probably going to end up just sticking it down here. We, we may then later break it out into a separate page where you can see your full list of friends and, and, and all that stuff. But for now, just keep it simple, just probably stick it on the home page somewhere, maybe just under this list of other people, or above, I'm not sure yet. And what we're going to need to do is add the functionality to be able to add and remove friends from the current user's friends list. So what we could do is create maybe a view and when they press a button they could go to that view which is essentially a URL that they would go to and connect with a friend. We could then redirect them to uh, the, the home page again and that would give us uh, the ability to uh, execute some code based on uh, when they've clicked a for example add friend button. Now I think what a, a good way of sort of implementing the logic would be is instead of having that logic directly in the view is to relate it to the friend itself because making and removing friend is going to be very specific to this friend model that we've defined. It's the only model that's going to need to use that functionality. So instead what I want to do is create what's called a class method. So to do this uh, make friend method I'm going to do at class method and I can explain this decorator in a bit if you're not familiar with uh, the different types of methods in Python but what I'm going to do for now is just treat it like a normal method so I'm going to say make friend and the first parameter of this method because it's a class method rather than instance method which is uh, normally what you'd be used to which is a, a method without this decorator uh, we're going to say class because it's going to pass the reference to the class itself rather than an instance of that class. By convention we normally use self for an instance and CLS for a, a class. So now that I've got that, if we think about the actual parameters that I want to pass in, I want to connect two different people uh, together so that they have some sort of relationship that we can use. Now each person is going to be a user, so I want to pass in two different users that I want to connect with each other. Now, one of them is going to be the currently logged in user, so we can pretty much assume that. So let's say that's the first parameter, so current uh, user. And then we can also have uh, new friend. So they're the two things that we want to connect with each other, and uh, they are both going to be user instances. Now that I've done that, we can do, uh, let's say, friend. So create a new friend instance here. Uh, I'm going to use the get or create method. So the get or create method returns uh, not only the object itself, but also whether it's created or not. So I'm going to say get uh, get or create. So let's do class dot objects dot get or create. So we know that this is always going to return an instance of friend, no matter whether it's been uh, just read from the database already because it already existed, or whether we've actually had to create a new one for this particular user. Now that I've done that we can do uh, current user. So I think what I want to do here is I want to check uh, whether the object, the friend object that we're trying to, to get, already has the current user as the sort of owner of that friends list. But we don't really have any way of determining that at the moment. I think what the best thing to do in this situation is probably to add another field to the model. So I'm going to say uh, current user. This is sort of like the uh, owner of the friends list, so the person who is currently logged in to see their particular friends. So that's just going to be a reference to user again, so that's going to be models.foreign key field because we don't need that many to many relationship here. And Django is going to complain if we don't specify a related name, so I'm going to do that as well. I'll explain this in a second. So related name equals uh, owner, so for owner of the friends list. Now a related name, if you're not familiar, is if you define a model that has one of these uh, relationships in it, then it's going to automatically give that 
a, re a related name so that you can refer to it uh, almost in reverse. So if we're connected to the user model, you'd be able to refer to it using its related name through that user model. Uh, but by default, the related name would be something like related name is equal to friend underscore oh sorry this is a string so uh, friend underscore set now this is generated by friend which is the lowercase version of the class name uh, and then it's added set on the end here now that's fine until you want to have two of these relationships because what Django doesn't like is if you have two uh, related names so that's not acceptable in Django so you have to have a different name for one of them now we don't have to assign both we can leave that off if we want but that's the reason I'm uh, specifying a different related name here now that I've done that I can say if current user so when we're checking for the object is equal to the current user passed in so remember we're going to pass in the currently logged in user and the user instance with which they want to connect. So that's going to be our sort of creation of the friend object if it's created or potentially already read from the database. But either way, this friend variable is going to have in it the object friend that we need to use. So now that I've done that, I can simply add the friend. So let's do friend dot users, so using this current uh, many to many field up here dot add and then I'm going to just say new friend so the current user here is the one that owns the friends list or uh, when a user is logged in it's going to be that user and the users is going to be all the other ones that they are friends with now since we already have the current user stored in this one we don't have to then add them to users as well because what I could do is do current user here as well but all that would achieve is storing the user twice once in current user and once in users as essentially a friend of themselves which I mean it's possible you're not going to break anything but there's really no point in doing that because we've just stored the data twice it's just a bit inefficient really but now that I've done that that should be all we need to do to be able to make a friend. Now that I've done that, I need to reflect those changes in a migration. So let's go ahead and do, uh, or in fact, let's, let's add null equals true here because if we don't do that, then Django is gonna get confused. Oh, sorry, null is equal to true. So by doing this, we're saying, okay, we don't have to have a current user. And the reason I need to do this is because I, I think I have existing objects in the database and if I want to uh, remove this null equals true then I'm going to have to say uh, a default for all of the other fields uh, but I don't particularly want to do that because I want this current user I only really want one user for one friend object so I don't I, I want that to be a unique constraint really so I'm going to leave uh, null equals true there for now at least uh, and then I'm going to run the migration so Django admin uh, make migrations so whenever we change the model we need to reflect that in migration and okay so now it's added the current user uh, to the friend model which is great so now what we can do is uh, apply that to the database migrate okay so now that's working so we should be able to go into the Django shell again and test the functionality that we've just written so what I'm going to try and do is make a friend using that new method. So what does this take? So current user and new friend. So that just takes two user instances. Let's have a look at the models that we've got so far. So let's just import a few things. So from Django.contrib.auth.models, import user. So that's the default one. And then we're going to do from home.models, which is our models, import uh, friend so that's the model that we're editing at the moment now that I've done that we can do let's just create a couple of users so user1 equals user dot objects dot first and user2 is objects dot last so let's just say user2 now that I've got those two let's just check their user objects 
So we've got Max and Test3, the two users that we're using, uh, just to test that this works. Now let's have a look in our friend model. So let's do uh, friend dot objects dot. Uh, so let's say let's say all, just to see if we've got any objects. So we have a few objects. Now I don't really need them, so I can delete them. And by the way, if you'd done that deletion before uh, applying the migration, then you wouldn't have needed the null equals true. But I just thought I'd add that in to remove the need to set a default there. Now, so we haven't got any friends. To use this class method then, we're going to do friend dot the class method, so make friend, and then I'm just going to pass in what it requires. So class is already being passed in because we're calling the method on the class itself, so that is the, the one that's going to be populating this class parameter, and current user is going to be u1. So that's assuming we're going to be the equivalent of being logged in as user one here, and then u two, which is going to be the second user. So, okay, so there's no errors there, which is good. So now we can have a look at the friend objects or all again, and you can see now that we've got one. Now, just to double check this works with the get or a create, uh, I'm going to add another one because if we, what we've done there is we've gone through and we've said okay, create a new friend object, uh, assign the current user, and add the friend to the many-to-many many, many -many field. But what we can also do is if we define, say, another user, user uh, 3, uh, I'm just going to get the second object in the database. So just another user object, and I'm going to pass that in uh, with the currently logged in user as the first parameter and then the new user that they want to be a friend with as the second parameter and now that we've got that we should see that there's still only one object because it should have gotten that object out of the database because the, the current user is assigned to that object so let's have a look there's still only one which is good because that means the get or create is working as we'd expect so that's how you can add a friend essentially. Now quickly what I want to do is just copy this and I'm going to add another one here and I'm going to say lose friend. So if they want to unfriend someone that's going to be easy as well. All we have to do is we, we change this to remove. Now I guess we probably could make this more dry but because it's just a very small amount of code I'm going to leave that for now and uh, maybe refactor it in a later video. But that's essentially how I would do the creation and deletion of the relationships between users in a social network in Django. In the next one we're going to actually use the logic we've just added to that model to be able to hopefully end up populating the friends list on the homepage.